Well, for more on this report and its implications, we are joined on the news at 10 by Mr. Larry Arugundadi, the director of International Press Center Lagos. He joins us via Zoom. It's good to have you on the news at 10, Mr. Arugundadi. Just how significant is this Thank report? You very much. Thank you. Well, how significant well, do you think this report is, especially when you compare that to years prior 2015? I mean, to what extent really is this a verdict on the current administration which came into power in 2015? It's a very strong uh, verdict, and I think it's a verdict that is not uh, favorable to the current uh, government. Because we're talking of an average of uh, 50 violations every year, as far as attacks on journalists are concerned, and as far as uh, attacks on media houses are concerned. Uh, what is significant about this report is that it's coming from the Nigerian Union of Journalists, and when you combine it with the reports by independently conducted by other organizations, including us, the International Press Center, uh, which through our safety alert desk documented 48 attacks on journalists in 2020, you will then you know, agree with me that the situation is worrisome. And it confirms what international organizations have been saying. And usually when they release their reports, we complain and think that uh, it is because they have a vested interest. So for example, uh, reporters San Frontiers, that is Reporters Without Borders, in their 2020 uh, annual uh, freedom index, rated Nigeria 115 out of 180 countries, which meant that we rank very low when it comes to uh, protection of uh, media freedom. So for me, this is something that is quite you know, worrisome and something needs to be done. Uh, just like uh, the guest speaker said at the launch of this particular report in Abuja, particularly because the perpetrators are well known from all the reports, either the ones done by NUJ, by ourselves, by Reporters and Frontiers, uh, by the Committee to Protect Journalists, the perpetrators of these attacks on the media are usually security personnel, particularly mm. the police, uh, paramilitary forces, right. or known government, and in some cases, political party agents or folks. Mm. Well, Mr. Arugudadi, let's round off on this. What kind of treatment does this report deserve, and by who specifically now? I think by all who believe that uh, media is relevant to democracy. The thing is that when you look at our constitution, there's a constitutional responsibility that the media should monitor governance and hold government accountable to the people. When that media is faced with assaults, everybody loses out. The society loses the right to know. Uh, the businesses lose the right to have credible information. And government itself cannot even communicate you know, with the public because what the public would see is the fact that they are intolerant you know, of dissent. So this report should be, should be of concern to everybody. And I feel that we have gotten to a stage where we should have real dialogue, face-to-face -face discussions on what can be done, especially on the part of those institutions that have been identified as major perpetrators of these attacks, the security agencies. Well, Mr. Larry Arogudadi, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on the News at 10. Thank you very much.